Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. And today we're looking in on the Red Wigglers, and I appear to be having a gnat apocalypse. Yuck. Um, tis the season, so I have all of my um, gnat traps going out, so I am catching them. It's just going to take a little bit to catch up. So, oh great, and springtails. Yay! No. Alright, so this moisture looks pretty good on the red wigglers here. Looking through here. I know we fed over here because it was kind of humped up. Um, but it looks like, you know, this part of the bin, I'm seeing tons of cocoons. There's one there, there, and there. Um, and that's just what I can see on top. So they are happy little worms. Oh, jeez. All right, let's keep looking. Cherry pit. I'm not sure, but uh, I think there's a lot of food over here. We just looked in on them a couple weeks ago. And uh, there's probably, I don't know, a pound, pound and a half of worms in here. Every time I say that, I think, well, that's how much I put in there, but that was a couple of months ago. So, you know, there could be a great deal more worms in here now, especially now that it's starting to warm up. So let's, let's kind of start gathering the food together, the old food. These guys probably aren't going to get fed if they've got banana left. So just kind of going through to see the status of the food. Going to put all the, uh, the red wigglers over there that don't have food attached to them. Kind of fluff it up a little bit, make sure we've got air in here. And... I mean, there's some of them are getting to be a pretty good size. But this part looks like it's definitely getting closer to uh, getting uh, harvested than, than I anticipated, quite honestly. Look over here. Yeah, those are some good size worms. Those are all mature. You can see the clitalum there. And sometimes if you see the clitalum and it looks kind of ratty, you know, almost like it's got an injury. That's generally um, after they've had their cocoon. Uh, apparently the process of having a cocoon and reproducing can uh, result in some injuries. And so sometimes if you see, you know, a worm that looks a little beat up, that's because they've just given birth and stuff. So, um, at least from a human standpoint, you know, I guess I, <laughs> guess I understand. All right, so I'm thinking we might get a worm ball here, so I'm kind of trying to be a little delicate at getting at it. So bear with me here. I see there's like a whole banana here, and it looks like there might be like a whole worm ball. No, well, no worm ball in the avocado, but we do have quite a concentration there with these bananas. Oh, there we go. All right, now I did not do that on purpose. I don't know what it is about avocado shells. They just like hanging out in there. I've like stopped breaking them apart when they're whole like this because it just seems like they enjoy it, even if there's no flesh left in here. I think they just like all like hanging out in here. Like this is the worm club, club worm. Yeah, there wasn't really any flesh in there. They just like hanging out in there. Okay, so bananas. This had even some banana left. These guys are definitely not getting any food. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Other than the banana, I can't really tell what the food was. Looks like there might have been some tomato. It's really kind of hard to say. But the, uh, the worms are definitely digging it and they're all nice and wiggly again. They were getting to the point when it was like 62 degrees in the basement. You know, I'd come in here and they would just kind of barely be moving and it was a little depressing. But now that they're getting all wiggly, then no, it is not depressing for me. I don't know. They said that uh, in the off season, some worms in the books, and I have links to those books that I've read, uh, at least the ones from Amazon, that have a lot of explanations about worm behavior and stuff 
and they're actually really cheap as far as that goes. And I think you can even get the audiobook version. So, you know, if your eyes are tired after working all day or whatever, you can actually get like an audiobook and it'll read it for you and you can still get all of that knowledge. But anyway, I put the links below in the video if you want to get involved in reading about worms. Here's a brand new cocoon, nice and lemon yellow. But they said that um, the worms actually, okay, so in the winter time, they don't actually go dormant, you know, like you think of hibernating bears and stuff, but they do actually um, kind of slow down. I, th I think it's called diapause. Anybody remembers reading the book and the exact wording of it, let me know. But it, it's, it's kind of like they slow down. They don't really, you know, completely hibernate. They just kind of slow down. Okay, so all right, tea bags that goes in there. Okay, so these guys are doing great. I am not feeding them. Uh, I am. Uh, I actually think they've got enough bedding for right now. They'll probably get more bedding next time. But these guys, these are ready to roll. I'm just going to put the lid back on, and we'll go get the next bin of red wigglers. All right, and here we are at the next bin, and you can kind of see where it slopes down and then it's flat. I have a feeling that's where they ate the food and everything sunk. When I put these on the shelves, I honestly don't pay attention to uh, <laughs> uh, which way I put them. So, but I see a lot of nice castings here. I see a lot of springtails. And then over here, this seems to be drier. And the worms are starting to move out of this area. So that's good. And yeah, so it looks like we have very little worms over on this side, so that's good. The migration is going nicely. Um, I still see some cocoons over here, but I'm willing to bet we can pull this out and let this dry and uh, give them some more bedding. So let me go grab a little container to move this over into, and then we can see what we get. Okay, I've just got a five gallon bucket that I'm gonna move this uh, mostly finished compost over here. If I see any worms, any big worms, I'll pick them out. But I didn't see it a whole bunch when I was going through it. But we'll grab them out. So this is, you know, I actually am really starting to get into this whole horizontal migration thing. Uh, you know, it saves time. When you have as many worm bins as I do, this really does save time uh, if the worms do the work for me. Um, I do have a full-time job, so um, I don't even know how many. It, it, it's bad. When you don't know how many worm bins you have, you're like... You might have too many, but uh, I also don't know how many orchids or bonsais I have either. And I don't know if that's just me denial, not counting them, or if, you know, I'm just dingy, I don't know. So this is great. These, these worms have done a great job of migrating. I'll put below how long they have been doing this migration, and uh, then you'll have an idea how long it, it takes but I did make some prepared bedding for the red wigglers in particular because this is one of the species that I do keep separate from my other worms. And so they get their own bedding because when I start making bedding, I actually use the castings from the bin that um, the worms came from. With the exception of the um, multi-species bins, uh, they just get multi-species bins castings to start the microbes in the bedding when I make it. If you're interested in knowing about the bedding, I do have a video about that, and I can link that below uh, at the end. So I'm just kind of slowly going to the edge here. I'm not sure how, how deep the migration zone was. It seems like I am getting into quite a few worms here. I'm just trying to maximize the harvest 
and also, you know, making sure that I don't, oops, I saw a worm there. Where did it go? Nope, there you go. Okay, let's see. I need a feeding zone, or a, what do you call it? One of those things that AV has. I need to remember to stop shredding all my cardboard and then, uh, then I'll have like a little divider where I know where to stop. All right, let's get them some bedding for over here and uh, then we can feed this side and maybe they'll get out. Okay, so as you can see here, um, there is grit already in this bedding. Shredded cardboard and coconut coir. And let me get a little bit more water because this is not as, uh, as wet as I'd like it to be. Okay. Especially since we're going into spring, I really have to be careful with how much water I add because in the basement here, the temperature goes up, but the humidity also goes up. So I really don't want to uh, cause myself troubles. All right, so let's get these guys some new food. And we'll put it over there. And uh, then we'll look through this area and uh, see what's going on over there. I think just like one big grapefruit, orange, whatever this thing is, uh, compliments of Cece. I've decided that she is the worm godmother. Um, there we go. Put that over there. Kind of make a separation here so that we can look at this side and see what's going on. Maybe grab some of these bigger things and move them over to the new side. So whatever I fed them last time, and, and I'll put a, a little box in there so you can see what they ate last time. They're definitely still digging it. So they definitely were enjoying whatever that was. All right, peanut shells, those are gonna be a while. They can come over here. So this looks like a good amount of worms. I'll bet there's more than a pound of worms in here. So if we just move over the super slow food over to the new side, then maybe we can continue to migrate these guys. Because this does still look like castings. I'll have to find the video. Okay, so there they are. They're inside their mango. That reminds me, I need to buy mangoes. My worms need mango shells. All right. There we go. So we did kind of get a worm ball of the red wigglers, which is unusual. I uh, don't generally feed them enough in one spot for them to ball up like that. But I think I'm going to try and build it up taller over here. And then maybe I can even add more bedding for them to move over to. And then maybe, I don't know, it, it seems like there's enough like citrus remnants and stuff, it might take a while. So if we come back here in another three, three weeks, then maybe we'll have better luck seeing that this whole area is um, vacated of the worms. Okay, so I'm just gonna add more paper over here and give them very little real estate over here. Kind of try and flatten it out so that it's equal. And then hopefully the next time we come in here, the worms have made the decision to migrate over. All right, well, these guys are doing great. Let me go get the third and final red wiggler bin. Okay, here we are on the last red wiggler bin. And I don't see where there's a dent on either side, so we'll just start digging and see what we've got. Really good density. The moisture's really high in here, much, much higher than I normally do on purpose. But I do keep a lid on these guys lightly, 
just so that uh, right now I think I have a mouse in the basement again till the cats take care of it uh, I don't want them getting in and messing with my my red wigglers I can't do anything about blue or anything like that so I do try and protect the ones that I can do something about what is this don't know maybe part of a pumpkin stem or something so it is nice they've had a lot of good moisture in here all winter because they've had their lid on yeah I think that I think that is part of a, a pumpkin stem so they do eventually break down I mean it takes a long time so we're not, oh, I'm finding a little bit of food here. So we're getting close. Looks like a little leftover citrus. Um, let's keep digging. See if we find a worm ball or anything. No. All right, they seem to be okay. And you can see the white spots. That's all the grit that I put in with the bedding. Um, I'm just going to flat out admit it, I'm a little dingy, I will forget the grit. I know I have the experiment with there's no grit, but for almost all of my bins I, I do add a very, very good amount of grit, uh, mostly because, you know, you got to do something with your eggshells, right? And eventually, even if the worms don't use it, it'll get used in the garden. The plants will use the calcium. Alright, so... Still not finding a concentration of food any place. It's been about two, three weeks since we looked in on these guys. And I think this bin does have a larger population of, of worms. So maybe that's why we're not seeing any of the food. There's just so many of them in here, they ate everything. Yeah, so no worm ball. Wah -wah. Okay, so we'll kind of move everything over. That's the only food that I found and it didn't really seem like it was, they weren't too excited about it. So we'll get them a little new bedding and then we'll get them some a good amount of food today. Okay, so not really a forbidden food, but not something you normally see me do is to feed bread, and this is pita bread. And uh, mold itself seems to suck in a lot of moisture. And I'm not really sure if that's for it to expand or grow or whatever, but uh, I'm gonna put some wet stuff on top of it so that the bread will actually dissolve. If you don't get the bread wet, it'll kind of turn into a brick. So it's always really good if you feed any kind of bread or cereal or pasta or anything like that. Make sure it stays really wet so the worms can get into it. Okay, so they're gonna get more lemons. I think it was oranges last time. And then I just have some of the, uh... all right, the camera stopped. So at any rate, I fed them some lemons and some bread, which I poured some liquid over to try and keep it nice and moist for the worms so that they will be able to get into that bread very, very quickly. And then we're just gonna make sure we cover up the food a lot because I am having problems with gnats right now. So going to try and slow down the gnat apocalypse. All right, guys, well, this whole Red Wiggler series has its own playlist. If you like that and you want to see more, I will click, uh, leave a link below. If you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.